One of the questions we often ask ourselves when we choose a new country to visit is how much budget do we need? That is why in today's video, we want to share with you how to travel Istanbul on a mid-range budget, where we'll include, of course, accommodation, foods, and attractions. So get your luggage just ready, because I'm sure that after watching this video, and once we tell you the approximate amount of money you can spend per day, you'll want to come to Istanbul right away. But before we start, click that subscribe button. And if you want to watch a video on how to travel Istanbul on a low and high range budget, then give us a thumbs up. If we reach the 2000 likes, we'll give you our best tips very soon. one of the main expenses that we need to consider when we are traveling in Istanbul is eating and for this of course if you want to experience the Turkish gastronomy we recommend you eating in different restaurants apart from your hotel and in this case we wanted to show you one one specific restaurant called Turkish breakfast that personally we love and every time we have the chance of coming to come here we definitely do it this one is in Jihangir, very close to Taksim Square. Of course, we're going to be leaving the exact location in the description box. And for this one, which is a Ban Kabaltesi, this is very famous in Turkey, the, the Ban Turkish breakfast. And it is very complete. We can find, oh, of course, the minimum eggs, cheese, cucumber, tomato, different type of sauces and everything. So. This one, this is for two people, and for each we pay only 60 liras, which in total is 120 liras, with the tea included. And even right now, I'm already full. So as you can see, there are many things. You, you will eat really, really good. Remember that in this video, we are showing you mid-range budget. So of course you, you might find uh, more affordable places, but in this case, because we are focusing in this type of budget, that's why we are showing you this place. So this is a perfect place for this budget. And by the way, if you also want to save money when traveling abroad, including Turkey, then we highly recommend you using WISE, an international account. You can open a multi-currency account for free and hold more than 50 currencies at once. It's like having accounts all over the world. You can also acquire your WISE debit card to spend in the local currency wherever you are. It is accepted anywhere that takes MasterCard or Visa. So for example, if you're coming from the US or Europe, you can use it in Turkey and pay in our local currency, which is the Turkish Lira. When paying with your WISE debit card, you will always get the real exchange rate you only pay a small fee to convert currencies in your account. So this is why this is a perfect option for frequent travelers. In addition to all the previous benefits, you can also send money to any bank account abroad. For example, in my case, I also personally use WISE to send money abroad and I also receive often transfers from other companies to my Turkish bank account. With WISE, you can send money to 80 countries seven times cheaper and easier than old school banks at the real exchange rate with no hidden fees. You can see all the costs upfront and with a calculator on the home page, you can see exactly how much it will cost to send money abroad. That is why that if you are living abroad as myself or you're a digital nomad, you can now receive your salary pension and many other transfers through WISE. If you want to know more about WISE, the benefits and the services, then we invite you to click on the link shared in our description box and pinned comment. For those new WISE customers, you can also get your first transfer for free by clicking that link. One of the most important expenses that we need to consider anywhere we travel to is of course the accommodation. And in this time here in Istanbul, we're going to recommend you a few hotels in different areas of the city that you can choose from. Remember that in this video, we're giving you the mid budget activities and accommodation. So that's why we are choosing these type of hotels. 
So let's start with the hotels. In this case, I'm looking from Google, but you can take a look from any platform. Let's start with snug rooms and suites. This one has a per night 874 in low season, 4.6 points. And here we can see all the platforms where we can check for the prices, such as booking.com and many others. Here is the location where we can see that it's located in Galata, near Galata Tower, which is a perfect location for families and you're close to many other areas as well. And the reviews also, we can see that it has a 4.6 points out, out of 5. The next option will be near Sultan Ahmed Square, which, which is Yasmak Sultan Hotel. As well, it has a, a similar price, which is 843 Turkish Liras per night and 4.4 points out of 5. As well, here we can see the prices that different platforms such as hotels, Expedia and many others have. And also the location, it's very close to Topkapi Palace and the Hagia Sophia. This will be a perfect location as well if, in case that you want to be as close as possible to the major attractions. The next option is Der Sadet Hotel Istanbul. This one is very close to the Little Hagia Sophia and Blue Mosque. As well, it has very good points, 4.7 out of 5. And here we can see as well all the prices on different platforms. The location is amazing as well. You will be close to most of the major attractions and you can reach everything by foot. Hotel de Camondo is another great option for those who want to stay as close as possible to the main attractions, but not in the main area. It's around the same range, 4.8 points out of 5. And as I told you, it is located in Kereke, which is very close to Galata Tower as well. You can find a tram, which will connect you to Sultanahmet Square, and this is a great option, I believe. And our last recommendation will be Aramin Hotel. It ranges in the same price, 4.6 points out of 5. And this one, what makes it really special, especially to those people that want to stay very close to Taksim Square, this is just three blocks away from Istiklal Street, which makes it a great option as well. For us, it's impossible showing you each one of these hotels that we are recommending you. But for this time, we're going to show you only one that we consider that it might be good for you, especially because of the location. And this one will be Snug Rooms and Suites. Also keep in mind that for all of these hotels and any other hotel in the city, just as in any other country in the world, depending on the season, the prices will change. So if you're coming during the summer, which is peak season, these prices will be more expensive. But if you're coming during the low season, uh, for example, in winter, then the prices will be more affordable. So just keep in, in mind that and go and check through some websites where you can also uh, check for the updated fees for each of these uh, hotel options. Of course, when in Istanbul, we will want to visit many museums or major tourist attractions. And for that as well, we might need some budget to visit some of the museums. Generally in Istanbul, most of the places you can visit them for free, but as well, there are those ones that you need to pay for a certain fee in order to visit them. In this case, if you want to visit, for example, in, in a day, the Galata Tower, currently the entrance fee is, a, is 100 liters per person. But of course, we're going to be leaving the official website of the museums so you can check the updated fees because every certain time they are changing the entrance fees as well. Per museum, you can expect to pay around 100 liras. And this is, for example, for Galata Tower, Topkapi Palace or Dolmabache Palace. 
There are plenty of other museums or mosques that you can visit for free. But of course, as I mentioned, you will want to visit some of the major attractions as Galata Tower. Our second meal of the day will be, of course, having lunch or dinner. This time we have ordered some chub shish or grilled meat skewers, some salad, and haidare. Haidare is yogurt mixed with garlic and mint. This is a type of mezze, and the salad is mixed. It has tomato and some onion and also walnuts. The haidare cost 31 Turkish liras. It is one portion. The salad was 40 Turkish liras and the chub shish 75 liras. Most of the main areas are reachable by foot. Walking is one of the best ways for exploring Istanbul. But if at some point you need to take public transportation, you can easily do it by tram, bus, metro, or even ferry. Any of these will cost less than 5 Turkish liras per trip. But in case that you prefer taking taxes, depending on how far you need to travel, you can expect to pay as little as 30 liras, for example, from Galata Tower to Sultanahmet Square, 50 to 70 liras from Sultanahmet to Pierlotti area, or up to 150 liras for longer distances, like from Istanbul New Airport to Sultanahmet Square. You can always check the taxi fees directly from Uber app or Bitaxi. That way, you'll make sure taxi drivers won't try to charge more money than they should. So basically per day, you can be spending between 100 to 110 US dollars. Of course, this depends all about the currency exchange at the moment when you're coming to the country. So here on the screen, we're gonna write all the expenses we made daily, so you can make your own calculations as well. This has been one of the most frequently asked questions by our followers and subscribers. So you already know how much you can be spending in the city on a mid budget. Also, we are going to make a video on a low budget and high budget. So also, if you're a traveler of that type, you can know how much you're gonna spend. And also don't forget this little piece of advice that if you want to save more money during your travels anywhere in the world, you can also use the service of WISE. If you want to keep receiving more tips and recommendations about Turkey and Istanbul, then you can click the subscribe button. See you next time, bye-bye. Remember that these hotels and... <laughs>